I've made two videos about terraforming so far, those being about terraforming Mars and Venus respectively. If you've watched those, you'll know that I'm generally against the idea of terraforming. Not because it's difficult or expensive, though it is, but simply because there are better options to make more living space for humanity. I'm very much pro-space colonization, but to terraform Venus, for example, you need to import thousands of asteroids worth of water, and those asteroids could be better spent building artificial space habitats. This will become important later. Usually when people hear the word space habitat, several objections are brought up. They're too small, or too cramped, or there's no way to expand, for example. Or there's no way to get resources, or there's too much radiation, or they're too prone to hazards. All of these are valid concerns. However, these problems have been thought about for decades. I wouldn't be promoting space habitats as much as I do if there weren't solutions for every single one of these problems. But I'll save that topic for a later video. Point is, I think instead of spending a ton of resources terraforming a planet, we could use those same resources to build space habitats, which are not only easier and cheaper to make, but will, in the long term, result in more living space for humanity than planets can provide. All the objections you have in your mind about space habitats have been addressed thoroughly throughout the decades, and there are solutions for all of them. But again, topic for another video. Anyways, all of that will become important later, because the moon is not like Mars or Venus. When talking about space colonization, people usually talk about colonizing Mars or other planets. If the moon is mentioned, it's a stepping stone, a temporary resting point on our way to the real targets. This mindset is not only wrong, it is directly harmful to space colonization. The moon is fundamentally different from every other object in the solar system in terms of colonization. It is not only a good place to colonize, it is the best place to colonize. I'll talk about this in much more detail in my upcoming video, The Real Reasons for Space Colonization but I'll give a shortened version here. The moon is a good place to colonize specifically for the same reasons that make it uninhabitable. It's low gravity, no atmosphere, and it's a barren rock. The moon is an enormous world filled to the brim with raw materials. It has iron, gold, platinum, and all the valuable metals Earth has. It has also been bombarded with asteroids for billions of years, and with no erosion, all those impact craters are still there meaning the moon's surface is littered with the remains of millions of metallic, resource-rich asteroids waiting to be mined. I'm sure many of you have heard the benefits of asteroid mining. The moon is like the entire asteroid belt coalesced into a single object, 20 times over. So, the moon has unimaginable amounts of raw materials, 20 entire asteroid belts worth. It also has low gravity and no atmosphere. That makes launching from the moon stupidly easy. Rockets don't need to be aerodynamic. They don't face nearly the stresses they face during launch on Earth. There's no air resistance to take into account. And with the low gravity, you can make rockets so large they would be physically impossible to launch them from Earth. Meaning, not only does the moon have incredible amounts of resources, it has the perfect environment for exporting them. And on top of all this, it's in Earth's orbit. As in where there are 8 billion humans, an entire industrial civilization, and trillions of dollars. The moon can extremely easily export these materials to low Earth orbit. Space stations and satellites are easier to make on the moon than they are on Earth. There's no life to destroy on the moon, no ecosystems to ruin. You can just strip mine the thing with no regard to environmental impacts, because the moon doesn't have a living environment. While mining the moon will not eliminate Earth-based mining, what it will do is eliminate the need for launching space infrastructure from Earth. From the moon, you can launch entire space stations bigger than the ISS in single launches. Instead of deploying a few dozen satellites at once, you can deploy a few thousand at once, straight to Earth orbit. You can launch gigantic ships we're going to need to colonize the rest of the solar system. If we want a future in space, the moon will give it to us. Yes, it is inhabitable. There's radiation, sharp dust, and barely any water. But that's fine. The moon isn't a place to live. It isn't a place to raise a family. But what it is, is a place to industrialize. When I say colonize the moon, what I really mean is industrialize the moon. If we want a spacefaring civilization, we need the moon. Moon colonies will usher in a technical and societal revolution. It's right there, meaning we can unleash the entire industrial might of the planet Earth to colonize it. Then, once lunar industry is in place, colonizing not just the rest of the solar system, but other stars suddenly enters the realm of possibility. The moon has everything needed to create a self-sustaining civilization based on building and launching space infrastructure, whether that be satellites, space stations, or ships. It is the most important place in the solar system to get colonies on, and as soon as possible. In short, the moon has more resources than 20 asteroid belts, is very close by, and is incredibly easy to launch rockets from, making doing stuff with said resources extremely easy, whether that be on the moon, in Earth orbit, or anywhere in the solar system. 
Again, I'll talk about this more in upcoming videos. This brings us to the topic of terraforming. The moon isn't a livable place, as I've already explained. It's a place to strip mine for raw materials and construct the ships that will take humanity to the stars. But it's not a place I would want to live in the long term. So what if we made it livable? Is terraforming the moon a good idea? Just like colonizing the moon is a fundamentally different endeavor compared to, say, Mars or Venus, because of its close distance to Earth, so is terraforming it. Unlike Mars or Venus, the moon is right there, right next to Earth. Earth is going to be the dominant body in the solar system for the next few centuries at the bare minimum, whether that be in terms of population, economy, technology, or culture. Earth has had 200,000 years of natural human advancement on it. Any colonized world will never be able to rival Earth in the sheer diversity of cultures for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. You can colonize worlds very fast, but you cannot rush centuries of societal development and economic growth. You can't rush getting billions of people there. And because Earth has more people, it will have more different ideas, more economic output, more technological advancement, more art, more music, more everything. Earth will be the hegemon of the solar system for, at the bare minimum, the next thousand years. Meaning, the easier a place is to get to from Earth, the faster it will be colonized. It's easier to get a rocket from Earth to the Moon than it is to get a rocket from Earth to Mars. Just as one example, sometimes Mars is behind the Sun. The Moon is never behind the Sun. You have to wait years for launch windows to Mars. Launch windows will probably become far less important once we invent better ships, especially if we start building said ships on the Moon, but they'll still matter. No matter what, it will be easier to get to Mars when it's closer to Earth than when it's far away. The Moon's distance from Earth does not change all that much. It's always right there. We don't need to wait months in between launches to the Moon. Earth has constant launch capability to the Moon, and vice versa, which is not something that should be taken lightly. Adding on to this, Earth has more resources than the entire inner solar system combined. You could combine Mercury, Venus, the Moon, Mars, and the entire asteroid belt, and the resulting object would be smaller than Earth. I talk about how the Moon has the potential to be the industrial capital of the solar system, but Earth just has more resources. Difference is, the Moon's resources are more easily accessible, no life in the way. And all the metals are just sitting there out on the surface because of asteroid impacts, no mining needed. But point is, Earth has resources needed to terraform the Moon. We have all the life already here. We've been accidentally delivering life to the Moon ever since Luna 2 crash landed in the plains of Merimbrium. Imagine what we could do if we did it intentionally. And remember, the reason we want to colonize the moon is to build the infrastructure needed for space exploration. Meaning, should we ever try to terraform the moon, it has all the infrastructure needed to build cargo ships. You don't need big, expensive rockets to launch from Earth. All you need are small rockets that can get to orbit, where their supplies can be unloaded onto a cargo ship. Earth, the most industrialized world, is right next to the moon, which will likely become the second most industrialized world. That's a great recipe for getting big projects like terraforming done. Not only that, but the moon is a lot of what we'd need to make an atmosphere. The lunar crust is literally made of oxygen. There's enough of it just in the crust alone to support 8 billion humans for well over 100,000 years. Getting it out is just a matter of melting the rock. Water is also a problem, but the moon has hydrogen and oxygen. Just like melting the rocks releases oxygen, melting the rocks and combining it with hydrogen releases water. The moon doesn't have a lot of native water, but it has the ingredients for water in plentiful amounts. Of course, there's still two things we need. The moon doesn't have much nitrogen, which is 78% of Earth's atmosphere. It also has no protection from the solar wind. Over long enough time scales, it's going to lose any atmosphere we make. This is one of the main objections to terraforming the moon, but it's really not true. Despite what you may have heard, the moon is more than capable of holding on to an atmosphere. It just needs to be replenished. The moon would lose a lot of air from solar wind, but not as much as you'd think. It's slow enough that constant resupply from cargo ships with atmospheric gases would counteract the loss. Or we could give the moon an artificial magnetic field by sticking a giant magnet in front of it. So, the moon has challenges related to terraforming other objects don't have. You don't have to really worry about the atmosphere being stripped off Venus, for example. But because of its close distance to Earth and raw materials, I fully believe that the moon is the easiest world to terraform in the solar system. But this is where the drawbacks begin. Remember, one of the core reasons that the moon is such a good place to colonize is because it doesn't have a habitable environment. If we add an atmosphere, then all of a sudden, launching rockets from the moon becomes much more difficult. And by this point, centuries in the future, the moon should have an export economy. Earth needs the moon to support its own space infrastructure. Giving it an atmosphere would make that much more difficult. 
all of a sudden your rockets need to take air resistance into account. Not only that, but the moon's resources will become much harder to collect. The moon's most resource-rich areas are the Maria or the Dark Spots. The Maria are where the metal is. But they're also the places on the moon with the lowest elevation. By giving the moon oceans, we will be burying the most valuable areas under billions of tons of water. And usually, the place with the most resources has the biggest colonies. So we'd be talking about flooding cities, and maybe even entire countries, that formed at this point. And once you add life on the moon, all of a sudden you have to be worried about not killing that life. And as I said earlier, the moon as it is now has no environment to destroy. Lunar mining machines will not be built to take care of the ecosystem. The entire economy of the moon would need to be rebuilt from the ground up. Even though it would take centuries, that's still a difficult thing to do. Terraforming the moon would fundamentally and irreversibly remove all of the reasons that make the moon such a good place to colonize. And the moon needs all that industry to be terraformed in the first place. It would be an industry that slowly destroys itself until it's replaced. Then, imagine what that would do to Earth. Yes, there are millions of resource-rich airless rocks in the solar system. Earth wouldn't run out of resources in space. If the moon suddenly disappeared, it's not like Earth's future space infrastructure would just collapse. But the moon is the best and easiest place to get those resources. The status quo is a very difficult thing to change. Imagine a world where we've industrialized the moon for a few centuries. It's become the industrial hub of the solar system. The best shipbuilding companies are located on the moon. The moon produces hundreds of space stations and tens of thousands of satellites every single year. There are other places to get all that stuff, but the moon is the most developed and so by far produces the most. Then someone proposes terraforming the moon. That would involve destroying the moon's entire export economy. All of those ships and satellites could not be built nearly as easily on a terraformed moon. This would have ripple effects across the entire solar system. Even if it's a slow change, as terraforming does take centuries, doing such a thing would disrupt the solar system. All in all, I personally believe that the drawbacks of terraforming the moon far outweigh the benefits. You need to be constantly replenishing an escaping atmosphere, destroy a lot of good industry, and force Earth, the capital of the solar system, to look for new places to get resources. Not to mention, even if it was terraformed, a terraformed Mars or Venus would just be a better place to live. In a solar system with multiple terraformed planets, who would choose to live on the moon when you could choose Mars or Venus with higher gravity and more living space? What's the point of having a terraformed moon in that scenario? You'd kill Earth's number one source of in-space resources just to terraform the moon to a place that wouldn't be all that good to live on anyway. But again, this lack of resources wouldn't be an immediate death sentence. There are plenty of other places to get them, like asteroids. It's just that the moon is the best. My point is, we shouldn't have to settle for second place. The moon is a good place to colonize because it isn't habitable. We'll get more use out of it if we keep it as is. Not to mention, the space habitats I mentioned earlier can be built and launched on the moon. Just to reiterate, space habitats do not have many of the problems people think they do. Isaac Arthur has plenty of good videos about them. The moon is a great place to build such habitats. Counterintuitively, not terraforming the moon could eventually result in more habitable living space created across the solar system. So not only are there short-term reasons to not terraform the moon, there are long-term ones as well. It'll be more beneficial to humanity to keep the moon's industry alive. I just think we need to accept that some worlds are best left uninhabitable. Now that is, as I've hopefully made very clear, not saying that we shouldn't colonize them at all. Colonizing the moon is something we should absolutely do, but terraforming it would get rid of the main reason we want to colonize the moon at all. Terraforming Mars and Venus would disrupt the solar system as well, but the positives probably outweigh the negatives in those cases. I don't think we should terraform them, because again, those resources are better spent on easier ways to make living space, but if we were to do so, it wouldn't be that bad. But for the moon, I genuinely think that terraforming it would be a net negative for the solar system. The moon is perfect because it's uninhabitable. It already has an important place in our future. In fact, it's in the direct center of it. Without the moon, we do not colonize space, ever. But terraforming it would destroy the industrial capital of the solar system, and nowhere else is as good. I think the moon is the prime example of a world that is best left uninhabitable. Humanity is stuck in this mindset that space colonization is only worth it if the place we're colonizing is habitable. But that's not true. Everything that makes the moon a place to develop also makes it uninhabitable. But that's okay, because an uninhabitable moon is a place that can build all the sci-fi things we want for a future in space, including space habitats that will eventually result in more living space than the moon has surface area. 
the moon should not be terraformed because that's how we get the most use out of it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space and space colonization.